if you have an older laptop or considering buying a used one like this Sony Vario from around 2011, let's just say five years or older, should you buy a used one to upgrade or should you just buy a new one? And if you did want to upgrade, what should you upgrade and how much should you spend? Want to find out? Roll the intro. Hey name tags, welcome. This is Ash from Hilmai Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. On this channel, we do repairs, reviews, and tutorials of tech, including sharing entrepreneur tips and strategies to help you unleash your true potential. In the description below, you will find timestamps for your convenience if you want to skip ahead to specific parts of the video, but I would be grateful if you watched the whole video at least the first time. So this client wants to fully upgrade this old Sony Vario model PCG71312M. I believe it was released around 2010 or 11. Before we start the video, the first disclaimer, this will not be an actual upgrade tutorial. The reason is because the client hasn't actually decided whether he wants to go through with the full process. So this assessment video is going to help him make the decision. Also, if I did do the assessment and the upgrade all in one, it would be a very long video. So please bear in mind that I'm not trying to prolong or turn this into a Harry Potter part seven ish, but I'm hoping that this assessment will help you guys. And this will not be applicable just to the Sony Vario model, but to any laptops that you wish to want to fully upgrade or part upgrade. Second disclaimer, this was also potentially going to be a how to buy a used laptop tutorial. So like the top things to look out for when buying a used laptop, both as an amateur without opening the back cover and also as a more daring enthusiast. So please consider subscribing if you want to see that video, which should be coming very shortly. So this Sony Vario laptop came with an Intel i3-330M at 2.13 GHz, which is a two core, four threaded CPU, was released in Q1 of 2010. It's got four gigabyte of installed RAM at DDR3, so that's two six of two gigabyte each, a standard 500 gigabyte hot disk drive, and Windows 7 64-bit home premium when it was released. Since then, the only upgrade is undergone was a free Windows 10 upgrade, I'm presuming, and everything else stayed the same. Needless to say that now, this laptop is running loud, hot, and very slow. So question one, why would you want to upgrade an old laptop, especially a five year plus old laptop? And in our case, the only reason is pure sentimental and attachment values. In other words, insanity. Yeah, let's just go with that. You guys know my feelings about laptops, generally, if you've been following the channel. But since our last video, where these two Heal My Tech wannabes came to challenge my opinion about buying a laptop for school, college, or university, turns out some people do need a laptop for studies. Who knew? So I guess I need to show you how to upgrade an older laptop. In today's case, it's actually a full upgrade, at least that's the intention, but a part upgrade will also be following the same process. So the client wants the following seven upgrades. Number one, a CPU upgrade. Number two, a RAM upgrade. Number three, a storage upgrade, he wants two drives in there, one SSD and one main hard disk drive as a normal drive. Four, potentially a new laptop battery, we'll come to that. Five, dust cleaning and new thermal paste application to improve the cooling process. Number six, a new Windows 10 home reinstallation. And last but not least, number seven is to install a SIM card for mobile internet on the go. Right, so before we start, I'm gonna deal with number seven. On this laptop, installing a SIM card for internet on the go is not possible, as this laptop does not have the components to add a SIM card. And I don't know how to do this, I'm not that good. And I don't believe it can be done. Maybe with some sort of engineering modding, but I'm not that qualified. The client is probably referring to this video where we showed how to install a SIM card in a Dell Inspiron E5430. So check that out. So now that's out of the way, number seven is not possible. If you want to have internet on the go, you should be considering a dongle for mobile broadband or other options like tethering, etc. So question number two, how much should you spend on a project like this? I actually called a few computer repair services around the block and no one in their right mind wanted to undertake a project like this. And I don't blame them. So in terms of pure labor cost, how much would someone charge to do a project like this? I have no clue. 
The research time itself took a lot longer than I thought, and adding that to the cost of uh, full cleaning, new thermal paste application, all the components upgrade, and the software installation, and in the post installation checks, I can tell you that I will not be offering this service to any more clients. This is my first and last time. The only reasons I accepted this project was first, the client is a good friend, and secondly, I get to do this tutorial out of it. Someone would have to pay me a lot more money than going rates, probably three or four times the going rate for me to consider doing this in the near future. I would not advise it for most people. So if you're thinking about paying someone to get this done for yourself, just don't bother. It's not financially worth it. You would be wasting yours and their time. And in the end, you'll have a product which is so not worth it. Instead, if that was the case, just go get yourself a new one. But if you are the enthusiast or the DIY daredevil and you want to be a techie and want to find out how to do this, then stay tuned. Moving on, for most cases with an older laptop or even with a normal laptop, just adding an SSD as an upgrade option is enough in most cases. Maybe adding some more memory if multitasking is your thing and just call it a day, you're done. Depending on the size of the SSD you will pick, this should set you back around £50 or $65 for a 120 gigabyte SSD drive. All you need to do is locate the existing hard drive, clone it to the new one, or install or reinstall a new OS on the new SSD, put it back, and call it a day. Fairly simple. And if you've got a USB installation disk of the OS of your choice, especially if it was already an activated Windows 10, it's really simple, really straightforward. But for this Sony Vario laptop, full upgrade is a little bit more complicated than this and definitely not to be attempted by newbies. In fact, I've actually never done a full upgrade on an old laptop before, but how hard can it be? I'm very confident I can do that. But in our case, it's even harder considering that Sony Vaio as a company, as a concept, no longer exist. They stopped making uh, desktops and laptops back in 2014, Sony. However, Vaio as a company did launch their own set of products in 2014. I've not worked on their newer line of uh, computers and laptops and desktops, so I'm not familiar with their design, but I'm hoping they kept the same design as when they were partnering with Sony. Unfortunately for me, that meant finding official exact information on the exact specifications and upgrade options for this model was almost impossible. So I had to rely on many non-official resources, including some forums. And that took a lot of time. So do take what I'm going to tell you with a grain of salt. First, if you see red on my hands, it's actually ink, yeah? So don't worry about it. Well, good. Okay. Okay, I've mentioned before, I've already done a Sony Vario laptop heat, uh, how to reduce heat and uh, disassembly, so you can check the video out. Uh, for this one, just very briefly, uh, I like Sony model laptops because it has one back cover, right? What it means is take it off and you'll have access to all the components. The first thing, always take the battery off, right? Press and hold the power button to discharge the static electricity for at least 15 seconds. Okay, and literally, you need a small screwdriver, right? And you can use an electric one if you want. I tend to do that. And what I tend to do is I start by removing the screws from one corner and I work around and I work inwards until I end up in the middle. Okay, that's how I work. You have various ways of doing it. Now, my method to safely keep the screws is to, every time I take a screw out, I tape it down and I number them. So I work in order. For example, this I know is a top two. There's these two screws here, one and two. And then the next one, I've done the DVD. Um, I think it's the DVD, yeah, the DVD. So the DVD drive is down here, and there are one, two, and three screws for the DVD drive. So that's how I, so that's how I label them. You can do whatever order you wish, but the idea is when you're done, I'm gonna work backwards to put all the stuff back together, and it's really helpful, okay? That also helps you to keep tag of the number of screws. So that's how I work. All right, so literally just undo all the screws, it's not complicated. This will be the uh, hard disk drive cover. This is the RAM cover, right? You take this off, not an issue. There are also uh, a couple of screws here behind the battery, so don't forget that. And clearly label each of them. So, and literally, 
um, you should be pulling out the DVD drive and put that aside. To remove the back cover, right, um, you're going to go and use something like maybe a plastic spurger and pry from one end, working all the way until you can literally pop it open. Be careful if you feel resistance when you're trying to do this it probably means you will have forgotten one screw, so go back and check. In this case, there was a screw behind this uh, Velcro, which I had to remove because it wasn't coming off, and which was down here, right? So this is where amateurs usually will be breaking something because they'll be trying to pull and they'll be cracking some sort of bezel. So be careful with that. But I love these kind of laptop models, very easy to get to, right? So once you've done that, it, this will literally come off and you can see the inside, can give it a clean for later. Okay, we'll put this to the side, right? So looking at the components, this was the DVD driver, we took it off. This is the hard disk drive, again, there were some screws, one, two, three, four, and can easily pull that off, right? Put that to the side, nasty hard disk drive the two ram sticks here so we're gonna just give this up okay right so upgrade number one is the processor i hope you can see and which is located underneath there and this is the cooler and this is the fan for the cooler there are screws again there's one screw here for the cooler Sorry for the fan, one and two. And there are one, two, three, four screws here that's retaining the processor. And there's also this little thing that you can need like a flat screwdriver to just unlock the tab before you can pull it off. But we're gonna go through these once we do the full upgrade options, okay? So for now, we're gonna start with the processor. The motherboard here, is what we call a G1 or RPGA-988A socket. So the only suggested CPU upgrades come from this website and there is no guarantee that this motherboard will actually support the upgraded CPU, nor the BIOS will support it. We may have to flash the BIOS and that may or may not work. As a rule of thumb, I don't like using forum advice for this type of information since I don't have the right CPU processors at my disposal. And I'm guessing many of you who do want to upgrade a similar laptop will be in the same situation. So the only sure way would be to buy a used processor and try it out. But I doubt the seller would take it back unless they offer special return policies or you will be returning the CPU under false pretenses. That is down to you. So my client tells me that he wants to give this one a go, the Intel Core i5 560M at $19.99 at time of writing, which of course is gonna be a used one. So I guess we'll find out. But why not try the i7, I hear you shout, since you are going for a full upgrade and it will only cost you an extra 10 pounds anyway. So yeah, client, why not go for the i7? Just a thought, I'm not advising, it would be your choice, just saying the choice is out there. So upgrade number two, because we've only got two RAM slots, we've taken out this RAM, this is two gigabyte. So this motherboard supports a maximum of eight gigabyte, which means we're gonna have to get two four gigabyte sticks. I think the uh, maximum support on this is 1066 gigahertz. And if we don't find that, we're gonna have to go with a higher speed, but the motherboard will only work at the uh, speed that it supports. I doubt that we can overclock on this, I can't be sure. But in this case, even overclocking or getting higher speed will not make that much of a difference. The RAM, what I found at the time of writing, would cost us about 42 pounds, okay? Upgrade number three, that's an interesting one. We are talking about an SSD. So this uh, hard disk drive is, an, uh, is a normal hard disk, and which is located here. Now we could just get an SSD of uh, whatever size of your choice and uh, call it a day and just plug it in here, clone the whole thing. However, there's one more thing we can do. And we're gonna make use of this space here, which was holding the DVD drive. Now there is something called an 
optical drive to hot disk bay caddy adapter like this one and a new one costing around 15 pounds so essentially what we're going to do we're going to completely take off the dvd drive and forget about it and here replace it with a caddy adapter and we're going to have an adapter also for the SATA ports here to connect a second drive. So probably I'm going to guess that the client is going to want a 120 gigabyte here SSD and this hard drive in the caddy plugged into here for storage. Obviously you can also go for higher storage as a real choice or even have two SSDs because like I mentioned before there is no way that I know at least for my level to install a second hard disk drive sorry, a second SSD anywhere, or uh, to add a M.2 SATA or whatever other card these days they have in terms of SATA drives. So I don't know how to do this. I don't think it can be done, maybe with some extreme modding, engineering level, but I don't know how to do this. If anyone does, please let me know, okay? For now, this will be kind of an interesting upgrade having two hard disk drives. And that will be the end of the actual upgrades components, okay? now. Could you also upgrade the LCD panel? Because this one is a standard 1366 by 768. Could you upgrade to a 1080p? I don't know. And maybe with a little bit of modding, but this is where I'm going to draw the line. It's not going to be worth getting a 1080p for this. Uh, I'm not going to do that, right? And that's the end of the actual upgrades for the component level. Upgrade number four, a new battery. This uh, original Sony battery still has some charge, but uh, I'm not sure how much charge it has. The client will have to decide whether they can uh, do away with just a little bit of charge and keep it plugged in all the time, or they can also get a new replacement battery. An original one, I think, costs just under 50 pounds, but you could also go with the cheaper options, you know, the non-original, the uh, com uh, compatible ones. Um, I don't know whether it's good or not for your laptop, but they, would cost you under 20 pounds, maybe even about 15, 16 pounds. I'll leave links below, okay? But that's not in the upgrade option at this time for us. Upgrade number five is gonna be more of a maintenance and servicing than an upgrade. So basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean this, we're gonna just clean the whole thing, we're gonna uh, lift this off and uh, apply new thermal paste just underneath there and Bob's your uncle. And uh, in terms of the rest of the upgrade, number six is going to be a Windows 10 reinstallation. Since this laptop had already an activated Windows 10 license, it's going to be a breeze. And we're gonna put just a few other software. Obviously, once we upgrade that, we are going to test the performance with a few benchmarking software. So do stay tuned for this. So at the moment, the total cost of this full upgrade will set us back at 126 pounds and 65 pence. I will put the equivalent dollars on the uh, screen, but depending on stock and also any additional shipping charges, when we finally hit the checkout, if there is any, this will be about the price, right? You can look around for cheaper components because this is a combination of old and uh, new. You can, but these are UK prices on the UK market. You could go with the China, eBay market and be patient, wait for a few weeks and get some components a bit cheaper. And that's it for now. So now all we need to wait is for the client to watch this video and also for you guys to give me some comments and some feedback if you want to see the actual upgrade. I'm gonna guess you're gonna to want to see the pre-performance and the post-performance, so we may do that. That's the end of today's video. Couple of final notes before the outro. This video was not sponsored. You will find show notes and links to everything I've talked about in the description below and in the cards above. Any affiliate link to sites like Amazon or eBay is clearly identified. And if you click them and follow through with the purchase, it will not cost you anything extra and you will help the channel with a small kickback. So it's a win-win for everyone. One more thing, if you want to ask a question, please be as specific as possible, including all the relevant details. You can check out this video, which I did called The Art of Asking the Wrong Question, where I address this very common problem so we can help each other out without getting frustrated and wasting time. That's it for today, folks. Like, dislike, share this vid and comment below. And if you found the content helpful, consider subscribing to help the channel and keep you notified of future videos. Once again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.